I put a secret laser projector on the beach somewhere, and there's uh, I, I put an expression in it. <laughs> If you guys are wondering how the 3D rotation is done, uh, I hope you like trigonometry. If you guys want me to read the expression to you, just like all the sides and cosines, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. By the way, can you guys see the projector in this room that I'm in? No one can, that's so weird. I think I, like, I, I don't want to pick up the laser projector in this room. Like, you, you guys might be able to see it in front of me. Well, I, I think I'm the only one who can actually see it. Um, no, it seems to be a problem for everybody. Because I have a laser projector in here, but I, I don't want to pick it up. Because, well, I, I can do that, but, like, I, I see it but no one else does. Well, why would I want to move it down? It's just sitting in front of me right now. Yeah, it's sort of right in front of me. Like, if I stand on top of it, it's right here. But no one else can see it. Oh, so is it down in the floor? No, it's not down the floor. It's a... Uh, it it's on the floor. It's right there. Well, to me. Uh, I see it. It's kind of like clipping through the ground a little bit, uh, texture-wise. But if you oh. did raise it up just an ever so slight amount, it's client-side loading. So, what you see might be different to a bunch of other people. How about that? Typically, um, typically in client-side loading, a lot of stuff vertically up will most likely go down a little bit. So, if you brought it up just a fair amount, it probably would work again. I just but brought it up a little bit there. Fuck. How about uh, now? I still don't see it. Nope. Uh, keep pulling just... it up till the actual. Keep pulling it up till the actual model comes out, and then we can work from there. How about I put another Otherwise, one down? Yeah, I was about to say it might just have been uh, a despawned item. I recommend copying the code and such. Yeah, that's gonna take a while because um the expressions in here. I have thirty of them in here, so I'm probably just oh. gonna copy the important ones. Yeah. I mean, you can just do the copy tool, I believe. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Okay. Good. So what are these three projectors back here doing? Uh, in the uh, that's a little art thing here. I'll show you guys. Uh, prepare for an FPS drop. Oh, I'm, already down. I'm already low. Oh, oh sh God. I know what this is. Yo, that's dope. Wait for the animation. Bam. Insane. Dope. Yeah, that's fun, right? Floyd. Pink 
Floyd. Lag is hell though. Oh yeah, without a doubt, I lost four frames. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Ten. Whoa! Come on, graphics. That dropped me four frames. Time to buy a whole new card. Oh, there it is. Do you guys see anything now? Wait, if I turn it on, do you guys see that? Yeah, we we see. Like yeah, the line? We, yeah, we see the okay. red line. It's just a bunch of red lasers, yeah. I'm gonna try the copy kit now. Now I can, now I can see this projector. Uh, I don't know oh, if it worked, I don't know. White. No, they're just white. Uh, did you delete it beforehand, or...? It did not copy the expressions. Oof. Alright, well... Control C, Control V. Yeah, man. Oh, okay. All right, dude. Oh, what oh. the? Yeah, there we go. Cool, right? Yo, it, it shows like the X, map. Y, and Z axis. Yeah. Oh, shit. So this is uh, this is um. Z equals the uh, Z equals the sine of the square root of x squared plus y squared. So basically, if you when you have the square root of x squared plus y squared here, if I if I do that now, uh, let me just edit the expression here. So if I if I take away the sine part, you'll see something a bit more familiar. Oh, we have a cone. Okay. Now now we have a cone because. The square root of x squared plus y squared, if you guys remember, that's the Pythagorean theorem. Yeah. So, as the point, it, it, um, x squared plus y squared, well, square root of x squared plus y squared is the distance that the point has from the origin, the, the very middle point. So, if I take the, if I do that, and I set z to equal the square root of x squared plus y squared, the height is its distance. So, as it gets farther away, it gets higher up, linearly. All so, right. we get a cone. So if I take the sine of that, because, you know, sine just goes up and down, sine wave. Yeah, we get the ripples. So effectively what you're doing is you're you're making the um, the X and Y axis, like, tilted on an angle, or in an angle in some way that actually makes it so it does that. Yeah, um, it, I, I, like, I had to hard code the axes in. Um, oh, okay. I had to hard code the axes in, and then like I had to use a bunch of uh, trigonometry stuff to actually make it like render properly if I were to tilt it at an angle. And, that, and I, I have a couple variables at the top that just make it tilt at an angle. And uh, oh, yeah, right. that's how the trigonometry is factored in. I would. Huh. I really need to learn how to do this because what, what you like, I've never seen before. Yeah, I didn't even know this was possible with the laser pointers. No, now I have something to use them all for. Oh, um, it's it was kind of broken for a second because I accidentally put a bunch of X's in the chat after hitting X to talk to you guys. Oof. <laughs> I can show you guys some of the other expressions I have made. Um, a friend and I actually made a little website that allows you to like, it, there, there's like a big like bunch of dots and you can click the dots and draw something and it'll give you a code that projects that image. Oh, oh shit. That's really cool. I'm getting one of them now. That's a really f***ing dope, man. Thank you very much. Exactly what the tower is using. Oh. Oh. Yo. Oh my god. There we go. Fun. Yeah. You all right? I do love those That'd pastels though. The what? The like the colors? Like pastel -y. yeah. Yeah, those are the high saturation colors that you can get. Cause like it, with the with the laser projector you can set um, both the hue and the saturation. And also the value, oh, okay. just like how bright it is. Uh 
there's a little bit of three-dimensional rotation right here. Holy this is, crap. This is epic. Gay play, and that's exactly right. <laughs> So what I've done here is uh, I set the hue to be the square root of x squared plus y squared. So the hue is dependent on the distance of the point from the center. Dude, what what the fuck? Yeah, so it's like that. And, and I can move it up and down as much as I want. So, hold up, let me, let me try or to side to side. my head. You're, you're using the square root of the position that is on like that theme then getting the color from that yeah i'm getting the color from just the just the square root of x squared plus y squared so like just just the square root just, just the, the distance of that point of each point from this i'm actually not quite doing it right hang on a second there we go well, i think I, um, I think i get where you're coming from like so the orange is the center and then the purple is like the yeah. furthest it can go right Like kind of looking at this through a different version of thing, it would kind of be like um, the cone that you were mentioning a while ago. If we were to yeah, look it, that it, it, it's pretty much analogous. Yeah, that's right. So you can see as it's slowly shifting to the right, I just I just edited the code a little bit so it would slowly shift to the right. You'll see the colors aren't moving because I made the color dependent on the location of the points. That's pretty cool. I know, right? And here, I'll, I'll rotate on the axes. So here's X. So now it's flipping like up and down. Oh I can do God. Y. So there's Y. <sighs> this is epic. And then here's Z. So then I can put them all together where I want as well. Oh. Dope, dope. And the way I actually coded this, you can put this in any expression and rotate anything around like this in this way. Wait, so exactly how are you getting the, uh, the rotation? Is it just both an X and Y rotation or is it more than just an X and Y? Um, well, there are, there is X, Y, and Z, but what I was just yeah. doing back there was only Y and Z. This here is X, Y, and oh, okay. Z all together. Ah, it's all not right. quite right because it turns out to rotate something in three dimensions and get it to wherever you want, like in three dimensions, you actually need four dimensional numbers. And right now oh, I only have right. three dimensional numbers. Yeah. So that's not really possible yet until I figure out what the hell quaternions are. Those are four-dimensional <laughs> numbers. If you guys want to, like, hear the, um... If you guys want to hear the, like, the trigonometric stuff, it's, like, x times cosine of zr minus y times sine of zr for the x, and the y is x times t sine of zr plus y times cosine of z it's, it's just ridiculous. Um, oh, yeah, I bet. I, I have, like, a... I have a piece of paper next to me where I worked out the math, and there's just, like lines and stuff everywhere it's great <laughs> dude you must really like math i can i can see that here i am majoring it in college right now damn you're definitely Gosh, putting dude. it to good work here thank you cool 30 cups of coffee just to get this going <laughs> uh i live off of um lemonade <laughs> so there's the magic yeah there's some sugar uh, there's the somewhere. magic ingredient yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this this is actually whack, but like in the good sense. Yeah. Big brain. The Big only brain downside is that t t tanks your frame rate, unfortunately. Yep, that's it. Like I will say, out of every condo I've seen, this is the first time I've seen this type of stuff. 
Am I an innovator? Yeah. I think so, yes. What'd you guys say again? I'm it. sorry. Or you're pretty much the man who's made the first moving picture in the early 1900s. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, this one looks kind of weird because I haven't added all the points. Boing, boing. Dude, this is really freaking cool. This is just, like crazy, man. I feel like this would be I worse if I got high. Sucks. I feel like there's a different size this needs to be, and that's why some of the points are like glitched out. Fair, fair. There we go. Yep. Uh, the way I did it was kind of weird, uh, where I had to like it, it depended on the size. Uh, the the way you can make expressions, you can make um, you can like there are functions that allow you to actually space the lasers based on like a fraction between two other numbers, and there's another way where you could just put them based on what laser they are, because every laser has an assigned number. And that's how I, like, lit up certain lasers and did not light up other lasers. Huh. I spammed the frickin' expression editor with X's again. Actually, what this is, it, it's a really long if statement saying, like, if the index is this number, or the index is this number, or the ex index is this number, then show the laser. If not, don't show the laser. So I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna change the else to um, show the laser anyway. So you can see it's just placing lasers places, and then I'm using an expression to light up certain lasers, and that's how that works. Oh, okay. Yeah, exactly what Dr. Ryan314 said. If um, if you guys know of Yandere Dev and his game Yandere Simulator and the code behind it, it's just a bunch of if else, if else, if else. That's what this is. Oh, so it's, it's pretty much like a really big nest. Yeah. Okay. The thing is, uh, when you're in school, math always sucks because the teachers just shove a bunch of numbers in your face, and they don't show you any of the cool stuff. Yeah, and a bunch of homework too, and that's not very fun. When you start to see all the cool stuff and all the all the beauty in it, and, all, and how numbers can work together and just like create cool stuff like this, and and how you can use them to your advantage, then you start to see the fun in it. And you start to see like connections between very obscure things and it's just it's really enlightening it's awesome i'm i'm really loving this canvas not set i'm not gonna lie <laughs> yeah it's cool we're making an improved version my coder friend who just joined the uh that there he is you can you can tell he's a coder because he has a computer on his head of course he um is. he is the one i made the javascript that generates the code and he makes the website that puts the thing into the javascript and then gets nice. the code out for you so oh, we're sure. making a better right. version we're making a better version where I'm um, here. If I if I set the else to one, uh, like if I set the else to um, show the laser anyway, you'll see it's just a plane. But what we're going to do instead is actually we're going to make it so that like, so the the maximum amount of lasers you can have with a laser projector is 400, 20 by 20 grid, arranged okay. like this. The maximum is 400. So what we're doing with this new code is actually we're making it so instead of Instead of placing all the lasers in a set position and then lighting up the ones we want, what we're instead doing is placing each laser individually. So instead of having a maximum area of just like the width and the height of the picture, instead of the maximum depending on the width and the height of the picture, which means we can only do like 20 by 20 as the maximum, we can make it theoretically as big as we want, just as long as there are only 400 lasers. So this is probably going to look a lot better once we get that set. Or not I'm set. Actually, Kev's not set. I'm, I'm genuinely speechless right now. <laughs> yeah, la the laser thing is so dang powerful, and no one knows how to use it. It sucks. Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, that's what I'm about to work on right now. Is making yeah. it so that you that it works on the done. website. I mean, it looks really good doing because you've got like all these like interesting techniques and stuff on how to. Yeah, oh like this, full God. full blown cube. I was about to ask if you made this.
That here is... you are, already impressing me. That is I can't nice. hear you from my friend, I'm sorry. I was about to say, if you've ever made the 3D cube, and then here you are, just throw, throwing yep. it out here. There we go. This is, um, the thing is, like, this isn't quite right for a 3D cube, because the way I'm doing all of this, just to keep it mathematically consistent, is that I'm using something called parallel projection. So if you guys have ever played, like, Roller Coaster Tycoon 2, for example, that is parallel projection, where um, any lines that are parallel on the cube appear parallel from any angle. However, real life is not parallel projection. It's called oblique projection, where, like, if you have two parallel lines on a cube, like, imagine putting the cube right in front of your eyeball, and you have, like, a, an edge on the left and an edge on the right. They're not going to appear parallel. And... Um, that kind of, like, this sort of compensates for that a little bit by making the top and bottom, like, by making the front, like, sort of wider than the back, but it's not quite right. But it still looks cool, so it doesn't matter very okay, much. So, yeah, that, like, oblique projection is a lot harder to do, and everything I made, like the, like the 3D graphing thing, that is parallel projection. Well, um, like, perspective is different in real life than, um, what simple math can create. That's what I'm talking about. Pretty much. Right. Also, Linus is here. You know, that reminds okay. me. There we go. Um, I am not the first to do three-dimensional rotation, really. Really? In this game. Um, MACD guy himself made a little thing on his, uh, uh like, on, on the Tower Unite laser projector, like, guide on Steam, showing the 3D rotation of, um, just like a cross, just a plus. And, uh, I think he could do it with just about any shape, actually. But, um, I tried to do it on my own, and I, I figured out, like, it, the way I did is, like, it's not quite as consistent, but it's, like, a little bit less complicated. However, this three-dimensional graphing thing here, this is completely new. I'd never seen this before, anywhere. I'm sorry, I think I might be the first to do this. No, no, you are without like a doubt the first. I can, I can verify this for all the condos in the eight, 800 hours I've played. Hooray! Yeah. Dude, everything that I've seen here is like pretty much brand spanking new. I'm still working on a little bit of the code because I can actually like change the axis lengths. Well, not the lengths, but like I can change how many points are in the axis. And then I can, um, like if I, if I make the axis length one, um, now you can see the axes are really are, they're really short, but now yeah. what that allows me to do is add more points to the uh, to the expression because now so as you may know there are only four hundred um, there are only four hundred lasers available to use. Now when I have the axes like this, um, now I have three hundred ninety four, so I can make the resolution really high. I can make it like Nineteen, for example. This is nineteen, as in um, there are nineteen points to the right and left of the origin. So that looks really good now, right? Yeah. But set to to twenty or higher, it gets glitchy because it runs out of lasers. Oh. I mean, still, even then, like. Oh. Oh. This is a hundred. <laughs> That's a nice W. <laughs> W. Ooh, it had like a really cool animation to it. All them coming in. So now I've set Bouncing. it. Yeah. So now, now I've set it that so that the uh, the resolution is just how many seconds the projection has lasted. So you see, it slowly sort of fills in. Yeah. And, um, and now. Black magic. It starts to fade away as the lasers condense onto one side, because it draws the lasers from one side to the other. However, because there's only 400, as it gets more and more compact, it covers less and less space as it uses those 400 lasers. So it just gets more and more compressed to one side, but the, the resolution gets higher and higher. Bro, what you're doing here is actually black magic. What'd you say? Man is Sorry. 
You're you're making straight up black magic here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's my that's my specialty when it comes to these things. <laughs> you're actually making black me magic want to learn lasers. how to do this type of for Mav. It's really cool. Yeah. Just math is so crappily taught in school. That's the problem. That's the only problem. Just the teachers don't really care, and they don't show you the cool stuff. This is I mean, the like, cool stuff. Like I will say, for example, like the thing that you have right here. If this was just put on a single plane, I and like you were supposed to give me like a diagraph, like red being high, blue being low. I would have never known what shape this is, and I still don't know what shape this is. Yeah, the color thing really helps, doesn't it? Oh yeah, without a doubt. I can make the colors constant, and it'll look a bit weird. Wait, what do you mean by that? I, I can set the colors just to be... I can just set it to, to, to all be one color, pretty much. Ah, uh, so universal. I'll see how that looks. I mean, eh, it's still kind of there. But you, we've been staring at it for quite a while. So you can still sort of see it. But with the colors, it's, it's a lot more dramatic. And now the ripples are more intense. Yo. Sick dude. Here, I just I just had the best idea. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep the, the ripples like sorta of low. <laughs> there he is. Okay. Oh, here he comes. Um, Coder Friend has just completed uh, a code that he wants me to try, so we're going to be the, oh. the first to see this. It, it might come from the, the new website that he made. He oh, says that you just oh. draw a line. I've... Oh, yo. Ah, ooh. What's exactly doing right now? Are you adding all of them still? It's supposed to be a diagonal line, but it doesn't seem to be working quite right. I'm just gonna try 10 by 10 and probably send a new code. Oh. Okay, I really want to try something. <laughs> now what I'm going to do is, if you guys remember back on like high school math, you can do a phase shift of a wave, right? So you can like, like if you add something to the stuff inside the sine or the cosine, it shifts it over some direction. Bro, I think you guys what? might see where I'm going with this. So if you take like sine, if you, if you graph sine of x, if you graph a sine wave, Seven, did you guys two, do that? Eight, sine waves? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. After high school. If, though. if you do okay, if you do sine of x, and you add something to the x, if you add a constant to the x, it shifts the wave over some, right? Oh, like so x plus two or to the positive. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do here, is I'm going to add a constantly changing phase shift to the sine wave and see what it looks like. It, it should ripple up and down. Right? Bro. Bro! <laughs> Yo! Bro! There we go, yeah! Alright! Bro! <laughs> actual black man? Yes! <laughs> that looks so cool, look at that! Yo, we got like a little jellyfish. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> no, that's like just straight up confetti. Oh, I like that one. That one's Oh, that's cool. so satisfying. Oh, oh, yes. I'm so glad this worked. You, like, I, I might actually just like take a picture of the thing I have and then like upload it to Discord and then put a canvas on the wall just to show you guys like. That there's not, it's not like too much, but it's like a whole sheet of paper where I just drew some stuff. Just get this Dude. to work. Give me a second. This is, this is fucking epic.
It, lo it looks like the ripples are going inward. I'm going to make them go outward. Yeah, that should have a nicer effect. Oh, that's more jellyfish-like. Okay, I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a canvas on the wall. Just, just scale it up so we can. Yeah, yeah. Hey, there's the math. Damn. Damn, man. Yeah, just a bunch of trigonometry, right? There you go. It's graphs and shit. So this one right here on the far right, this one right here with the, on the far right where like the the, the rectangles like tilted, that is figuring out just horizontal rotation. And then I had to ro I had to rotate that. I had to like turn it 90 degrees like from the top down. But like like bringing the front, bringing the top of it and moving it down to the front. I had to rotate that so then I could get this um, lateral rotation, whatever you want to call it. Just like it spinning around the z-axis. Using some sort of, uh, in it, like, other form of xi? Yeah, um, yeah, the xi and the yi, those are like, xi and y are like initial, i for initial. So yeah, like if yeah. I have just a if I just like a square for, or a rectangle on the x y plane, uh, the x coordinate is x i and the y coordinate is y i, and so then the new x and y are um, the new x and y coordinates, depending on x and x i and y i with some stuff done to them. Okay, so it's pretty much just like a trans uh, translated uh, movement to those axes. Well, it's not I'm quite translated, I guess, but um, it's just like rotated and then using um, trigonometric projection to um, get the right location on I a flat plane. Okay. Oh, I'd never be able to do any of this stuff. No, Only you can. Like... You just... It, 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 you have to be interested in it, I guess, and know what's going on and have to really well, think hard. True. First, Sorry, I will I, stop I, the rotation. Yeah, I saw it. Thank you. No problem, man. Okay, here we have some hills. They're not moving right now. But I will make them sort of, like, move along the landscape. Oh. And now they should be moving at, like, the same... in the same direction, but it's kind of hard to see that because the resolution is only so good with the lasers. Maybe if I spin it. Okay, that looks... No, that just makes it trippier, but it's still cool, yeah. Okay, there we go. That's more visual. That's more visible, I'd say. Oh yeah, I thought it out. I can make a bastard. That is weird. All. Look at that. Multiply the x by 3. See if that does anything. Which, I know that would just be scaling. Oh! There's hey, a graph.
take a picture of it. I can kind of imagine what the surface would look like. It's sort of like that that square root thing, that like bird looking thing, but just like traced along the path of x squared. Yeah, I can kind of see that. That's cool. Oh, I completely just randomly came up with this in my head. That's yeah. Awesome. It, it's like it, it's kind of like a parabola, but like extended to both yeah. sides. But it has like a like a ridge along it. Plane. That's really cool. Yeah. Okay. No, I was wrong. That's that's also gonna be kind of weird because we're taking square root of negative numbers again. So it has a strange shape to it. I can. Exactly how Well, I just I'm just taking the absolute value of x instead of just x. So that way it still has a square root. Theoretically, either both bird or square in order for this to properly work. Uh, say again. Am I thinking this wrong? So both would theoretically either be a square root or a power, and not one being a square root and one being a power. In order for what? Like, what do you in mean? In order for like... You can't take the yeah. You can't take the square root of negative uh, okay. numbers, of course, and that's oh what yeah. I, mean. I guess watch out I guess for that. theoretically this would also be yeah being applied to, being the, applied to um, negatives on both sides of this thing. Yeah, I can. I, I'll try that. Hang on. I think this will look a bit more continuous. My my. I'm making natural objects in my brain. <laughs> Thank you. Dude, what you're showing me here right now, I, I've learned from just that whole entire square root with this, this is actually really Really act knowledgeable stuff. You have actually yeah, taught cool. me today. <laughs> I'm glad to have done that. In fact, I'd like to be a math teacher. That's my goal. Dude, you're doing a solid job on it. With thank you very much. I'm excited for the future. This should be a saddle shape. It's a bit screwed up now. 